<laughs> Hiya folks, hope this video finds you swell with your fave watch on the old wrist. Today, we've got another snazzy piece on deck, one that sort of tipped the scales for me with a truly special micro brand, Fairer. If you've peeped some of my other content, you might have gathered that I'm a sucker for micro brands. Without a doubt, the micro brand space is the most vibrant sector of the watch market right now, and more and more, the avenue for solid bang for your buck dealios. There are so many out there from every corner of the globe, and trust me, I've got all my eyes on as many as I can. England in particular has drawn my eye. First, it was Christopher Ward. I've got a few pieces from them that I treasure. And lately, Ferrer has been very much on my mind too. I said today's piece, which by the way is the Resolute Sorbet, was a tipping point for me. Ferrer had been on my radar for a bit, but most of my favorite pieces, including the original Resolute and the Discovery, were a bit too large for me. Excellent pieces, though they were. If you've shopped around as much as I have with a wrist like a robin's leg, like mine, you know 39mm sounds good on paper, but dial heavy pieces will often wear Gigantor. So I cooled it on fairer and bided my time. Then, bam, they started firing off 36mm bangers left and right. Enter the Resolute Sorbet. The initial wave of small, the 36mm three-hander collection, featured this reference along with a new version of the OG White Resolute, a cherry red variant of the Discovery, and the Erebus Midnight. Real talk, I dig all of them, but until I hit the lotto or rob that bank down the street, I gotta pick and choose my battles. And the Sorbet really rang my bell. That's a lot of preamble, but I think it's worth it when you're talking about a micro brand that maybe not enough people are paying attention to. Not that Farrah is some hipster underground brand, but still, outside of the watch nut bubble, the awareness probs isn't there. And I know I don't see them nearly enough. All right, before everybody jumps ship and throws tomatoes at me, let's bust out our spectacles and get down to business. The dimensions here are just chef's kiss or, you know, like chef's makeout session, if I'm being honest. That's the level of enthusiasm we're talking about. We got a diameter of 36 millimeters, a thickness of 10.4 millimeters, a lug to lug of 41.2 millimeters, mm. a lug width of 20 millimeters, and a weight on the bracelet, keep that in mind, of 102 grams. That lug to lug is really the cherry on the sorbet, y'all. I'm a big proponent of the stubby lug. All hail the stub. A short enough lug to lug does so much work toward making a watch even up to 39 or 40 millimeters and beyond eminently wearable, even for the T-Rex wristed among us. Trust me on that. There's so much to like here. Lately, I've become such a simple watch simp. Maybe y'all can relate. Show me some clean Arabic numerals. Swoon. But the simplicity here is belied by Ferrer's well-known flair. And that combo is really Ferrer's magic, I think. The dial is obvi a standout and something we've gotta note. It is the watch's namesake. We've got a pale, kind of floral orange, like a flower I want to eat on a summer day, if you know what I mean. Orange is one of my fave colors, so I acknowledge my bias here. I like all shades, but it's not often you get a watch that isn't more like a construction sign orange, you know? You gotta recognize. The loom on the blue-toned syringe hands is a matching orange shade. Those in the know, well, know that the Resolute, even the OG, is special with its loom block numerals. More on that later. The blue echoes continue on top of those loomed numerals, loomerals, with the applied Fairer A logo, the painted branding, chapter ring, the A arrow shaped tip of the seconds hand, and the tiny automatic text over the six o'clock. A vibrant fire engine red really adds that little extra oomph on the seconds hand. Whew. So many deets, y'all. I'll try to make sure to include a lot of angles with this one. The blue tones are especially subtle with this piece. In a lot of light settings, those accents appear black, but when you go out in the sun and you cock your wrist just right, wowzers. Blue, blue, blue. The case is understated. Very refined dimensions, like I've already touched on, with a decently sized crown capped with a signed bronze inlay, another fair calling card. That'll age 
and patina over time as you set the watch, you wind it, etc. I'm not a huge fan of bronze on a whole watch, but contained here as it is, I can dig to add a bit of character. I'd be remiss to not call your attention to the box sapphire crystal as well. Not as legible as a flat sapphire, but there's a certain charm, you know, a vintage -y kind of charm to that wee bit of distortion. I went with the mesh bracelet, which is signed at the buckle, mostly because I'm a mesh head and just like them. It's not the best mesh bracelet in the world, but I figured I could always snag a leather strap from them later or use any of several I already own since this piece has a common 20 millimeter lug width. The bracelet pairs well too, since there's a lot of high polish happening here with just a smattering of brushing on top of the lugs. On the back of the watch, we've got an open case back so we can clap eyes on the Swiss made La Joux Pere G101 movement. I feel so fancy when I say that. I'm not really a movement expert or too persnickety about them in general, but from what I've read, it does seem to be well regarded. It's 24 joules with a power reserve of about 68 hours. Side note, that is a big improvement on a lot of other watches at this price point, with oft-used Salidas boasting just a smidge over half of that. Mine is running at about plus 7 seconds a day, so I'm a happy camper. Okay, back to the loom. That's a big one here, homies. Since the numerals are literally built up on a block of loom, you get a really unique and powerful effect, which I'm going to try my best to capture. Looking back at the footage and pictures, though, it does look a bit bluer than it does in real life, where it's kind of like a glowing lightsaber green, if you know what I mean. Really hammer highlighting those numerals in the dark. It's a winner on that front, rest assured. If you're wondering about the name of the reference, outside of the sorbet part, which is probs fairly self-explanatory, their website has a helpful little blurb. The piece is curiously named after a 19th century British Navy vessel, which is a tad perplexing since it's not a dive watch or nautically themed in any way, and boasts a modest 50 meters of water resistance. But who am I to quibble about a name? I digress. I reckon I've gabbed enough. On the whole, I think this watch is a great balancing act. It straddles the line between dressy piece and everyday fun. It's got a lot of personality, as much as an inanimate, <laughs> as much as an inanimate non-robot object can have, I'd wager, while still operating on a pleasantly simple and functional level. In short, it's really the kind of thing I look for in watches. Check Ferrer out if you've not really considered them before. I feel like they're constantly upping the ante with new releases lately, and it's only a matter of time before another one sails its way over from Merry England and into my watch box. I'm looking at you, Aquamatic. Shh. I hope you have a rad day wherever you are. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I'd love to get your perspective. Thanks for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend with me. Take care. Ooh.